Hi, it's Paul from Vermont. You know, I've been using my voice professionally since I was 17 years old or young. After a career in Dutch radio, I became a voice actor in the United States of America. And recently I've decided to call it quits. I'm done doing voiceovers. And in this series, I'm telling you why. So far, I've cited my health as the number one reason I am leaving voiceovers. My vocal endurance has gone down since my stroke. You probably have heard it during this series. And without medication, my heart would still be racing like crazy. AFib, atrial fibrillation, is still a big concern though. Only a few months ago, I landed in the ER and I really have to be careful not to get into stressful situations which can make my problems worse. Getting out of the freelance rat race definitely means less stress and better health, which is so important to me. I've talked about the lack of ambition on my part as well. You know, the been there, done that feeling, as well as the rise of AI voices that are rapidly taking over from us real people. The entire industry is changing and I don't think it's necessarily changing for the better. But please feel free to disagree with me. Since the moment I started recording voiceovers in the United States, I have witnessed a cheapening of our craft and a steady erosion of rates. It's the law of supply and demand. When something is scarce, people are willing to pay a pretty penny, but when the market is getting saturated, the buyers are calling the shots. And with the advent of home studios, the bar to entry for voiceovers became a lot lower. No longer did we have to visit a professional studio with all the bells and whistles to record voiceovers. All we needed was a computer, an internet connection and a quiet reverb-free spot in our home. Audio equipment became a lot more affordable as well. And add to that the pay-to-plays, you know, the member-supported websites that connect clients to talent. Thousands and thousands of hopefuls created a profile, no question asked. Nothing. All you needed was a credit card and any amateur could pose as a pro. No longer did you have to be vetted by a reputable agent. No one asked about your background, experience or training. Veterans of the industry found themselves on a level playing field with absolute beginners. Now some will say that the cream will always rise to the top. So do turds, by the way. But has it really? Has the cream risen to the top? Who says clients want expensive cream? I am in contact with colleagues who are considered to be the bee's knees in the industry and they're having trouble booking. So they turn to coaching, which pays even less. And it's not even the fault of these predatory online casting sites. They are free to run their business any way they seem fit. No one is forcing people to sign up. These sites make their money through membership fees. What do they care about how much we make? Nowadays, they're all investing in AI, by the way, probably using the voice samples on their site to train the applications. Voice actors are making themselves obsolete. And they're paying for it as well, through their membership fees. I mean, we've all heard stories from colleagues who spent hours recording a specific project for some vague Chinese company years ago. And once that company was sold, the audio files were used to create text-to-speech software which can be purchased online without getting permission from or paying the talent. And when the talent shows the original contract to a lawyer, there's always an overlooked clause in very small print, making it impossible to go after the company they recorded for because it no longer exists and they've signed their rights away for a stupid amount of money. But... I hear you say, Paul, that is stealing. My voice belongs to me. I should be able to control if and how it is used. Well, you might be surprised, but the lawyers disagree on that. I guess it depends in which jurisdiction you live. As always, the Europeans are way ahead of the Americans. I wonder why. But even in Europe, the situation is far from perfect. But about the whole theft thing, have you ever... Be honest, have you ever taken a screenshot of a photograph and used it online without permission from the photographer? Have you ever copied a piece of sheet music for a concert and not paid royalties to the composer? Have you ever watched a movie that is in theaters right now on a torrent site? Come on! And even if you haven't, 
Tons of people of a different generation are doing it without thinking twice. People will do anything not to have to pay for something. People are programmed to want more for less and probably for free, preferably for free. I mean, I only speak for myself, but I'm as frugal as can be. A penny saved is a penny earned. I'll take out my crystal ball and... I don't see rates rising any day soon. A site like Fiverr took that illusion away a long time ago. But again, it's not the sites, but it's the people using and supporting the sites and agreeing to the terms and conditions that have to take responsibility here. Am I just talking to a wall? Or does any of this resonate with you at all? Does it make you angry or depressed? Or do you still hold out hoping that things will change for the better? Please let me know in the comments. Let's talk about it. There's more to come, by the way. Stay tuned.